Hey there, comic friends and fiends, Rob here, and I've got a video today, uh, an informational video, uh, as opposed to one of my unboxing videos. This one here, I want to talk about bags and boards, um, and I know that there's a lot of information out there about bags and boards already, and mine's not really going to be anything significantly new, maybe, uh, but it's going to be based on my observations and some other information um, that I've accumulated over time and ultimately result in uh, what ultimately I decide what I like to use um, because I have gotten actually several PMs from individuals asking about well my thoughts on different bags of boards and what I like to use so I thought why not let's put it all together here and make it out so uh, anyways if you like this video I hope that you'll hit down below hit the like button to help promote the content out to other people and of course if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit the subscribe button so we are alerted when new content drops uh, anyways with that ado, um, uh, let me throw a quick thank out out there to Small Town Collectibles uh, for a recent shout out. Uh, appreciate it very much, sir. Go ahead and check out his uh, content as well. So without much ado, let's go ahead and get into our content for today, which is going to be uh, on bags and boards. Uh, before we do that, however... We do have to get to the uh, my typical legalese disclaimer uh, about this guide. So while the goal here is to present factual information, it is as it relates to comic book bags and boards. This guide should be considered nothing more than entertainment based on my uh, information or my own informed uh, opinion based on some research that I've done. I am an enthusiast and a hobbyist and not a subject matter expert, a chemist or a chemical engineer. The information presented is taken from observations based on my product use and from a variety of other web-based sources, including manufacturers, websites, other enthusiasts, and some so-called comic experts. Uh, images of branded products within this presentation are not an endorsement of that brand or product, but are examples borrowed from the public domain without permission of those companies, nor is this guide intended to be an endorsement of any one brand over another. I am in no way affiliated with the comic book or comic book supply industry. I've received no payments, free services, discounts, or other concessions not available to the general public as it relates to this presentation. I am doing this simply because it pleases me to do so. At the end of the day, you should make your own decision that best fits your situation and needs. Remember, don't listen to anybody it's your collection uh, don't especially listen to me i'm just a fat man with a fat stack of comics and a fat opinion having said that let's move along how to make money in the gold rush the gold rush <laughs> rob what are you thinking this is supposed to be about bags and boards i know that and bear with me so during the gold rush uh California gold rush, few who struck out in search of fortune uh, actually would find it. The few miners ever actually made it rich. In fact, most miners would spend money, more money seeking gold than they would ever recover. There was, however, one group that consistently did all right for themselves, and that was the businesses that supplied the miners. Hardware stores, saloons, inns, brothels, they all made good money supplying goods and services to the miners. The comic book industry is really no different. Lots of people are going to flock to collecting comics in hopes that they'll get that one book that makes them rich or builds a collection that they they can retire on. But that's not reality. Uh, most of us will spend more money building our collections than we'll ever get back, especially when we try to move those books in volume. Uh, we still chase the dream, and we meticulously bag and board every comic to ensure that it's in the best possible condition for that one day when we might sell that book. While most of us will never get rich off of our collections, those that supply us with bags, boards, boxes, etc. continue to do well for themselves. It I bring this up because unless you are an expert in the plastics and chemical levels and the most of us just don't know that much about them except what we are told and in doing my research much of this information that we've been told 
pertaining to these board, bags and boards uh, comes from manufacturers and suppliers and retailers. They have a vested interest in certain activities such as us doing repurchasing over and over again. So much of the rest isn't much more than folklore that's passed within the community itself. So having said that, I want that to be in a frame of reference when we're talking about certain things when it comes to bags and boards. Um, especially when we're talking about the frequency at which we need to swap these things out. So essentially, if you walk into a comic book store, um, there's three uh, types of bags uh, that you're going to find when we talk about bag types uh, on the shelf um, or that you'll come across in discussion boards. You're going to hear about polypropylene or poly bags, polyethylene bags, and bop it, biaxially oriented polyethylene terra. I don't know. Forget it. I can't even say it. Mylar, right? We call it Mylar. <laughs> but I bring up the fact why it's its full name on purpose, which will be clear later on. So these are the three types of bags that we're typically going to come across. Polypropylene or poly bags. These are the most inexpensive or affordable bags. Um, they're typically fairly clear bags. They display well. They offer moderate protection against moisture, minimal protection against damage, such as abrasions and stuff if you rub the bags up against stuff. Um, according to the manufacturers, the bags break down over time. Yes, we know and observe that they do yellow and that they don't necessarily hold their shape. They do wrinkle over time. Uh, over time the question of whether or not they stop providing any protection uh, to the bag, to the comic within, or can damage that comic within, that's open to interpretation. Uh, but most of the manufacturers recommend that they you change out your bags three to five years. Again, consider it a source. I leave that to you to decide. I have seen some people claim that they've left books in poly bags for 20 plus years. And yes, of course, the bags don't look pretty but that the comic within is perfectly fine with inside. Again, we have to consider the sources. Polyethylene is slightly more expensive than a poly bag, um, but much less than Mylar. Uh, they're typically a little bit more milky in color. They're not needle in less light. Light is good, potentially bad for the books within. Um, they offer moderate protection against moisture and moderate protection against damage. They're typically a little bit thicker um, than the poly bags themselves. Um, and so these, these still will break down over time, although they manufacturers tend to save seven to eight years, they're still gonna yellow. And again, they're not gonna hold their shape. They're gonna wrinkle stuff. Same things with the poly bags, whether or not the bag, the comic within gets compromised, I don't know. And then the third that we deal with is the bop it or mylar bags. These are the most expensive, uh, typically six times the cost of poly bags. This is based on a uh, same brand comparison using BCW brand bags on the BCW's website um, in November 2020. Now, Individual prices may vary, location, sourcing, and everything else, but just that one source, it was approximately six times more to use the Mylar bags than it was to use um, poly bags. Uh, they are exceptionally clear. They offer good protection against moisture. They offer good protection against damage. Uh, they're considered archival quality. Um, there's no need to change them out, according to the manufacturer. And the only really kind of downside to them is that they can cut or tear a comic if you're not paying attention. They're harder, they're firmer, they're more rigid. They have the, If you're sliding a comic in, it is possible to slice a comic with these things. Um, additionally, they're going to be thicker. Uh, they're going to fill up more space inside your comic book box, but that's a minimal um, deal. And, and so those are the three comp types of bags that we typically hear and see about. But hold the phone there actually is another option that we just don't see about. And that's by axially oriented polypropylene. It's not available from a traditional comic book manufacturer or supplier. Um, 
like BCW or E Gerber or some of these others. Uh, but they man, but this is the type of bag that's manufactured for archival of pictures, documents, records. I mean, vinyl records, all kinds of items, and are typical. And so, one of the big suppliers of this, they make bags. In the, out of this material in all kinds of different sizes and whatnot, and they're used across for archiving in a lot of different industries. And they do have a bag that is also about the same size for comic books. So it's got nearly the same protection of Mylar at about one-fifth the Mylar price. A matter of fact, <laughs> uh, some people, if you've been in the business long enough, may have remembered um, a kind of a little scandal for a while. There was a company that was selling bags on eBay uh, claiming that they were mylar and really they were made of this biaxially oriented polypropylene. Um, and this is just the biaxial orientation process is a process in which whether it's the polypropylene in this case or the polyethylene in the my mylar where it's stretched and formed as opposed to blown in such a way that causes it to get a much more rigid strength um, and durability. Okay, the uh, the price comparison we talked about, of course, that was uh, using clearbags.com, who uh, makes all these, uh, has a big source of these BOP bags versus the BCW supplies in November of 2020. So the biaxially oriented polypropylene bags, they're slightly more than the poly bags, but much less than Mylar. Crystal uh, clear bag comic displays very well inside of it it offers good to great protection against moisture and ivories i say good to great is some sources i saw suggested that the moisture protection um, was greater in bop than in mylar um, i could not find that in any kind of independent lab or some kind of assertion, it was uh, just simply from some so-called experts. So I put that out there, but at least it should be at least as good as um, the Mylar. Now, keep in mind, you're typically not sealing these things. These things are not being hermetically sealed. So, you know, humidity can only be so much mitigated inside of these bags. Um, it's moderate to good protection against damage. So the Mylar is going to offer better protection. It's a th typically a thicker, um, harder um, material than the BOP, but the BOP is definitely firmer and more protective than the polyethylene and, pol and poly ba polypropylene bags. It is considered archival quality, again, with no need to change out the bags, um, but it is not quite as durable as Mylar. It does have a lower um, melting point and that type of stuff, so heat sensitivity. Granted, it's still like 300 degrees of melting point, but, you know, I don't know where you're storing your comics in a kiln, maybe, that you have to deal with that, but it, it isn't as durable as the Mylar. Okay. So that's bags. Four types of bags. Let's get to boards. Boards is much simpler. There's lots of options out there, but nearly universally it is agreed uh, a couple traits when it comes to backing boards. Um, and that is that the backing boards should be acid free. Um, it's only, for the most part, backing boards sold for comics only the cheapest of cheap bags um, would have any acid content to themselves. Uh, acid, of course, would be bad for the books. The books themselves already have acid, and that's an issue to deal with. Um, really, other than that, you get to the size of the board and the thickness of the boards that are being sold is kind of like the only real significant difference between them so much as to whether or not that board is made you know the di physical dimensions or how thick it is um, and then of course there are more and more manufacturers selling in clear boards these are be far more expensive now but on certain books if you're not going to be uh, if you're going to just be bagging and boarding them and you want to be able to pull them out and see the back side of the comic book then clear boards may be something for those books that you want to make sure you do especially those that maybe have wraparound covers and whatnot 
So acid free comics, especially those printed on newsprint have acids in the paper that will deteriorate the pages over time. BCW states that you should swap out your boards every three to five years as their boards will absorb acid that migrates from the pages to the board and the board eventually hits a saturation point. What they don't say is whether or not that once it hits that saturation point, it just doesn't absorb anymore and it becomes pretty much neutral or whether or not that's uh, a negative to the comic book. Um, but of course, they're in their interest of wanting you to change them out because that makes them money. E. Gerber, or My Lights brand, uh, does not absorb acid. Uh, there's no change in the, in the acid level uh, over a 10-year period that was observed in some independent testing. Both manufacturers provide a calcium carbonate um, to their boards. In the BCW, that's what's absorbing the acid. They're saying that their, their books um, are not made with ground wood, which contains acid like the E. Gerber's does, where the in the E. Gerber's that... Uh, calcium carbonate is there to absorb the acid from the board itself versus the BCW boards where that's absorbing acid from the book itself. Um, additionally, if you're concerned about long-term storage on news, older newsprint books, there are microchamber papers that can be uh, used in between, between some of the pages in a book. Usually you put like two, a third of the way and two thirds of the way through the book along with your backing board to help absorb additional moisture or can be used to absorb odors. The other thing to consider, of course, is thickness. Exactly how you how you like um, how the thicker the board, the stiffer the book's going to be kept, and the greater the protection offered against bending. Um, alternatively, you can utilize multiple boards. So, uh, typic the typical board you're going to find in the store is going to be the point two four, um, and you can get all the way up to you know extremely thick which you might use again on really old expensive books fragile books or in the course of shipping and other things like that for your typical per uh most of your comics that you're buying today you're going to be just using the 0.024 books the 24 point books uh or boards and then you can always like i said double them up whatever the case is maybe as need be the board size, of course, has to do with the dimensions, the height and width. Generally, you're going to find these to match with the size board you're, you, or bags you're using. So you have current, modern, silver, golden age, etc., etc., and they're going to come in different sizes. Typically, if you buy from a single brand like BCW, for example, here, uh, the modern board uh, is going to be about a quarter of an inch narrower than the bag itself. Um, so that way it slides in easily. You, there is limited ability to do mix and matching. Um, obviously, you can always put a smaller board inside of a bigger and not vice versa so much. But um, anyways, so you're going to mix and match your bag. Uh, you're not going to mix and match your bags and boards typically. Match your board to your bags. So now we come into the part where you're entitled to my opinion here on all this. Um, with, with regards to what bag I use and bags and boards combinations etc right so when it comes to current bags and boards uh, the I don't really utilize these at all uh, I get these sometimes from my comic book store when I forget to tell them I don't want bags of boards this is what they're gonna slip in uh, my but my books into uh, the backing boards provide minimal protection they're basically exactly the size and width of the comic you can see from this pictured comic there is no board extending on the left right or even bottom of the book here the book tends to settle into the bag um, there's room for the comic to move around inside there and actually not get any protection from the board on the left to right um, portion People will then say, oh, that's why you use Silver Age bags and boards. Silver Age bags and boards, hey, you get the advantage. Now your board is bigger uh, than the modern comic, and it's going to provide you some protection. But there is a quarter inch width gap um, between the back and the board. As you can see from this smaller inset here, you can see the board has the ability to move around. The comic can move around because it's not a tight, snug fit. Now you can input additional boards in there which is what you would typically do especially when you're sending books off to be signed because you want to make sure those books get are really firm in there don't move around 
but the problem with that is that adds thickness to my um, bags and, and limits how many books I can put inside of a box. Storage starts to become an issue when you start to get a, a very significant size collection and being able to put an extra 20 books in a box, I'm pulling a number out of the air, uh, it can be significant and can be important. So I have my own solution that I've kind of come up with and that's what I use is I use um, the clear bags, uh, those BOP bags that I mentioned. Um, because they offer the archival quality and the and the greater um, protection than the poly bags they're significantly less about a fifth the price of the uh, mylars so it's a good balance for me they come in a seven and one eighth by ten and five eighths inch size typically the sil a silver bag is seven and a quarter so I use these clear bags with silver age boards, which is seven, in, seven inches wide. This means this board just slips inside the bag. I'm not enough that I'm not risking tearing the bags. I've never had one tear yet, and I've done thousands of these bags and boards. But I mean, it's a little bit slower slipping those boards um, into the bags than it is if I'm doing it um, with the regular silver board into a silver bag so i so it is a little bit slower process of loading them up but the end result is i have a snug fitting board in that bag and the comic once it's slid in there does not really move around much it stays centered where i want it so that way even after it's been sitting in the box when i pull them out the bat and if i if i seal that bag tight then i don't have even the comic book dropping to the bot won't even settle to the bottom of the uh, bag and board. It stays suspended up, which is helpful to me. So that's uh, the combination that I use um, for myself personally. Plus, I have the adv added advantage because it's still smaller than a Silver Age bag. If I want to use this to make a one of these bags to make a window bag that I'm going to then send off to um, uh, somebody to get signed. I can still slip it into a silver age bag to protect it during shipping that then they can pull it out and still have the windowed bag within. Um, additionally, uh, with these bags, although it is tight, if I have an extra thick book, um, either, you know, sometimes some of the specials, the 80 page specials, whatever else, well, then all I have to do is just instead of using a silver age um, board, I'll switch down to like a modern board, not the current boards. But the modern boards and that then gives me a little bit more uh space in the poly bag for that extra thick book so that's my choice last thing i just want to show you so here's a kind of this is what a bop it or mylar bag on the left looks like compared to the b the biox bleh, the bop bag on the right uh there is side by side very you know the, again granted some of it's hard to tell because there's a little bit difference in glare because these are actually two books not two pictures of this, the same book in different bags this is two different comics in two different bags side by side so there's a little bit slightly different variation lighting but ultimately you can see that both of them are hot, very very clear and everything else so that's uh kind of my thought on the whole thing when it comes to these uh bags and boards um i hope that you found it in interesting if so please leave a comment down below one way or the other let me know what are you using what mix do you find if there's something else that you found out there that's working better for you than anything i've mentioned here let the community know we all want to know hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and thanks for watching again do what you want collect what you want you make your own decisions don't listen to anybody especially me i'm just a fat man with a fat stack of comics and a fat opinion thanks for watching